Good morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Chris has gone fishing today and it's Monday and I got up at 6 30. So I'm on the ball this morning and wanted to do Bible study with you guys. I got up and um, got all my chores done and I've got uh, my week planned. So I just wanted to say hello. Let's see. Do we have anybody coming in? I know y'all don't do not expect me today, so I may not have that many of you sign in this morning. Um, it is Monday morning, June the 6th of 2022. Let's see what our bird is for today. June the 6th. Monday, June the 6th. It's a Eurasian Eurasian eagle owl um i was just reading about owls the other day because my sister said that she thinks she has an owl living in a brush pile they had a tornado come through there about a year ago and they it blew down a bunch of trees and so they have a brush pile out by the house and she said there's a big bird that flew by and went into the brush pile so i went on to Google searching if owls like brush pile, piles and it's actually a way to attract an owl to your yard. So I'm sure she has an owl and I think owls are super cool. And so um, I thought that was neat. I don't know if you guys got to see my pictures of the of the young hawks that are living in the backyard. I just posted it as a post on Facebook and on the community page for YouTube. And if you didn't, you should go back and take a look because, boy, are they cute and they look grown. And at first I thought we had a new hawk in the yard. When I zoomed in on it, I thought, these aren't orange-breasted hawks. And so then I realized the mother flew in with a snake and the other hawks started flying into the nest in our backyard. And then I realized that those were the young hawks. And, boy, are they big. And this time they didn't just leave the nest and not come back. They have hung around and you hear them screaming every evening, I guess, when it's time for them to eat. And so uh, that's pretty neat. All right. Owl for the day. We also had some abyss. Ibis, I think is how you're supposed to say it. I say abyss. And Chris says, I say it wrong. And I don't know if there's one in this book or not. Um, it doesn't really tell you where the birds are in this book. It just tells you um, who made the picture. But anyway, we saw they've been flying into the yard. They do every year and they eat in the yard and they pull up bugs and stuff out of the dirt. And I was thinking, you know, when we lived in um, Paulding County, we actually had a grass company come and spray our yard, not the backyard, but the front yard. And I was thinking when those were out there eating, I'm sure glad because they go in everybody's yards. Uh, those birds, they have really long curved beaks. They're a, a water bird. And I thought it's a good thing we don't have our yard sprayed because they eat in our yard all the time. Um, Margie said she was just watching the Aldi grocery trip. Will you go back and watch that, Margie? When we get off here today but since i'm live you can join in right here right now um anyway i got a lot of my chores done i've already had my shower put on my makeup curled my hair i am doing good y'all and so i think i'm gonna make a dollar tree meal today you know out of that stuff i got at dollar tree because chris cleaned up the garage and i have bags out there of that stuff i bought and i need to cook it um and then i've got to do something with ground beef today i may make a beef pot pie so I'm going to get started cooking as soon as we get off here. Uh, but since I went through Bible study this morning, I was going to talk to y'all about it. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know I talk a lot about my health on here. I know I do. Um, let me open that up. But can I say um, a lot of people don't understand why I talk about my health that much. And it's because they have great health, okay? And so if I get on here and I talk about my health, 
They think I'm a complainer and that I hurt all the time and there's always something wrong with me. And can I say this? The reality is there usually is always something wrong with me. Um, and that is why I'm considered disabled, I guess, because um, even if I have good days and I get a lot done, I still have a hard time with my health. And it's just because I inherited it from my mother and my grandmother. And there, there ain't a thing I can do, but do the best I can. And um, but I had somebody tell me that all I did is complain. And so and I don't want y'all to, you know, I'm just saying that if you've never had pain and you've never had fibromyalgia and you've never had this arthritis and you've never had all these things that are wrong with you, you should be grateful and praise the Lord for it. But last the last week or so, I've had the hardest time ever since I took that antibiotic with my feet and my ankles and my Achilles tendons. And can I say I prayed to the Lord last night and I, I asked him to please help me and uh, help me get rid of some of that because on my left foot, it has been so tight in my Achilles and there's a knot on it. And I don't want to have to go back to the doctor and I don't want to uh, have to deal with all of that like I did with my right foot years ago. So um, I'm having a good day today. And I just thought I would tell you the power of prayer is really um, important. And sometimes God does answer our prayers and sometimes he don't. Um, but I have to say, I feel better today. We have a viewer today having breast surgery. She's having a, a mastectomy today, and I think she's having a double mastectomy. Her name is Amy Johnson. So please keep her in your prayers today. And she's uh, just like every one of us are if we've been through breast cancer and we've had that done. Um, she's already mourning the loss of her breast, even if... It is a good day to take the cancer off of your body. It's still hard as a woman uh, to lose your breast. And I remember when I lost mine, I was excited to get them off because of the cancer. And people can say whatever they want to, but it's very emotional. And it's something that you go through. It's hard when you're being intimate with your husband. Uh, there it, it's something that you just can't explain unless you've been through it so please keep amy in your prayers today amy johnson is her name and um and let's keep her in our prayers and that the lord would be with her and her husband as she goes through this and i know that many of you out there have been through it and some of you lately and i just want you to know that i love you and i'm praying for you okay all right now Today's Bible study, I was looking for something to drink. I don't have anything to drink. And I'm going to leave the screen for a second. I'm going to get me some water, y'all. I got on short shorts. <laughs> I got on my short shorts. Woo, well, I've already washed a load of clothes, folded a load of clothes. Cleaned out my coffee pot. I am on the ball, made up my bed, took my shower. All right, so if you're still being lazy this morning and you hadn't got up and got started and you just don't feel good, it's been a few days since you showered, can I encourage you today to get up and get ready and maybe even make up your bed today. Um, when we get up and do things, it sure does make us feel better even if we are having a hard day or a hard time it's always good to get up and get started and what a better place to start than with the lord in bible study right so we're going to hop on into bible study i'm not going to talk a lot today if you don't know it i did start a new show but it's only on facebook and if you don't have facebook i'm sorry but it is a facebook thing um, I do a lot for YouTube, but mostly I do edited video for YouTube. And I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of work. And you guys are very faithful. And I thank you for watching Colored Valley Cooks. But on Facebook, I have started a new show called ABCs of Cooking. It comes on at 8 p.m. when I am able. And it is going to be a lot of fun. It is not really cooking as much as it is a talk show. But anyway, we're going to hop on over to Bible study. 
And today's Bible study comes out of the Blue Letter Bible, and it's Charles Spurgeon's study um, devotional. And it is June the 6th morning reading, and it says, Behold, I am vile. Behold, I am vile. And I don't think we really know the extent of what vile means. When you say, or when people say in the Bible that they are vile, um, there's other words that describe it. It seems a lot more uh, descriptive in our language today. And that is, I am disgusting. I am despicable. I am evil. I am repulsive. I am horrible. Now, just to hear I am vile doesn't really get to the depths like saying disgusting, despicable, evil, repulsive, and horrible. And nobody wants to think that they're evil. And nobody wants to think that they are these things. But can I say there was men in the Bible that said they were these things. And when you are a sinner, that is how you appear uh, sadly, before our Lord and Savior in God, because your full your sin is what he sees. Okay, so we're going to talk about that today. It says, Behold, I am vile. One cheering word, poor lost sinner, for you. So this is for the lost, okay? If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, if you've never admitted that you're a sinner, if you've never admitted where you truly stand with God, okay? It says, you think you must not come to God because you are vile. Now, there is not a saint living on the earth that has not been made to feel that he is vile. If you are saved by Jesus Christ, at one time or another, you had to admit that you were these things. You had to see yourself in this state in order to need a savior, okay? It says if Job and Isaiah and Paul, the apostle Paul, were obliged to say, I am vile, oh poor sinner, will you be ashamed to join in the same confession? If divine grace does not destroy all sin from the believer. How do you hope to do it yourself? And if God loves his people while they are still vile, you do think your do you think that your vileness will prevent him to love you? So he's saying, look at yourself and have you seen yourself as vile? Do you think God sees you that way? And know that every saint out there that is saved has seen theirself that way. Okay? It says, believe on Jesus. Jesus calls you just as you are today. Not the righteous. Not the blameless. Jesus came to call sinners. He came for people like you and me. So say this today. You have died for sinners. I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, sprinkle your blood on me. If you will confess your sin, you shall find forgiveness. If now with all of your heart, you will say, I am despicable. Wash me. You shall be washed now. If the Holy Spirit of God shall enable you from your heart to cry, just as I am, without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and that you offered to come to me, O Lamb of God, I come. You shall rise from reading this morning's portion with all of your sins pardoned, forgiven. And though you did wake this morning with every sin that man has ever committed on your head, you shall rest tonight accepted in the beloved. 
Though once degraded with rags of sin, you shall be adorned with a robe of righteousness and appear white as the angels are. For now, mark it. Now is the accepted time. If you believe on him who justifies the ungodly, you are saved. Oh, may the Holy Spirit of God give you saving faith in him who receives the vilest. Amen and amen. I remember when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, although I was a child, I could see that I had sin in my life. And I could see what I deserved was hell and not to be living with God because I wasn't acceptable. I remember knowing that once I was saved, I would be washed as white as snow, pure, pure. Once you're saved, you're always saved. God forgives us of our sin because of Jesus Christ, not because of who we are, not because of anything we've done, but because of his wonderful and amazing son who gave his life so that we could live as righteous and be a child of God. I pray today, if you're not saved, that the Holy Spirit could show you that, show you that you need a Savior. And I pray that you will accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. What a wonderful Bible study today. I hope that it's blessed you. And I hope that the Lord blesses you today with these words. I'm praying for you if you're lost. And I'm also praying for you if you're saved. For you can rejoice as I do today that you are washed white as snow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for the call, Lord, to those lost, those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they could see that they could be righteous through Jesus Christ's blood. They could be a child of God. They could be white as snow and live in you. That they could have the hope of an eternal life. One that Jesus has conquered death. One that they could live forever and be your child and be with you one day when they die. For we do not wish anyone to see and be a part of hell, which is what we deserve because we are lost and undone without you. Be with all of us today. Help us look to you for our salvation, for our love, and just be with all of those out there that are lost. May they see you and see who they are and see that they need you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And I thank you for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. I'll see you, Lord willing, tomorrow morning at 930. Oh, we'll see. Tomorrow is my evening Bible study, I think. Um, so I may change it to, well, I might can do 730 and then turn around and do uh, ABCs of cooking. Um, we'll try to do that. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.